Thank you for choosing Access On Demand. We're the fastest growing home health technology company, helping improve care for more than 1.5 million patients and trusted by more than 7,000 healthcare organizations to grow their business. Access is a firm believer in continuing training and we create content so you can learn and grow anywhere, anytime. Let's get started. Hi, thanks for joining us for this series on home health marketing. And today, this is part two that you're going to be experiencing. We're really talking in this part about partners and growth and how do you implement what we talked about in our first segment of this series. This is looking upward and outward for partners and growth. My name is Marilee Orsini and I've been in the home care industry for a long time. Part of it as a provider and last part, last 20 years actually, in helping agencies grow. So we're going to talk today in this series about another way to meet the future that has to be a positive in this changing environment for home health agencies. And in preparing for the future, which is a changing future all the time, you really do have to deliver and you have to have stated outcomes and you have to be able to prove that. But we've got some ideas for ways to compete and ways to get ahead and I think you'll enjoy this. In the second part of this series, we are really going to talk about how you actually get in front of the partners that you're going to need to get in front of to be successful in the future. The third part, we'll do some specific marketing tactics about that. And in part one, if you haven't seen that yet, you need to go back and look at it because we are talking about creative ways to approach how your agency does go to market in the future. So when we look to the future, we talked in the first part, and this is a bit of a repetition, but the key is that people are looking to bundle their services. They're looking to partner with different people in the community, different agencies, different services in the community so they can expand their service line. They're narrowing their networks so that there aren't so many agencies that they have to refer to or so many businesses that they have to refer to for them, it makes a more efficient operation. So how do you position yourself for being a prime candidate to be selected for one of these partnerships? That's what we're going to talk about today. Who do you approach? How do you approach someone? And what kinds of things do you need to have in your toolbox, in your marketing toolbox or your marketing toolkit, or the way that you go to market? What kinds of things do you need to have to stand out? Well, you have to research the services that are already being provided in the community because you really do want to make certain that if you're going to pitch a service to a partner that you have the service that they're going to be looking to provide. So that's going to mean looking for gaps in service provision. Or you can also look for perhaps a weak partner that's already involved that's not providing up to the level of quality that the larger entity would really like to be providing. So how do you do this? Well, you do it like you would do any type of trying to get an introduction into someone. You have to research who the players are. And then do you know anyone? And do you know anyone who knows anyone? Because if you do, then you'll get an introduction. You know, it's sort of like in LinkedIn, if you really want to get in front of someone, you can start trying to find out how do you get in front of that person and and who can make that introduction. The other thing specifically within a partnership, you're going to look for who is the decision maker because you might be able to befriend someone at a different level, but if they can't introduce you to the decision maker or if you can't get in front of the decision maker, you're pretty much wasting your time. So how, when you've identified that decision maker, then how do you get in front of him or her? And this is the thing that it's really research targeted marketing. You need to look at, do they have a favorite charity? Do they have a favorite sport that they go to? Do they have children? Do they have grandchildren? Do they have pets? I mean, what what are some of their passions that would allow you to have chance meetings with them? How can you make your paths cross? Because you need to be able to get introduced to the decision maker. You need to be able to get in front of the decision maker. And if you have something in common, that's going to make that meeting a little more easy to attain. So once you have figured out who you need to approach, and once you've done your research and started your strategy and process of trying to make your paths cross so that you can get those meetings and and you can get in front of that person, what do you need to do 
to be able to get their attention. Well, in the third part, we're going to talk more about branding, but you really do have to have a professional image with branding. And by professional image with branding, I mean that your material needs to look good, your website needs to look good, and you need to look good, or whoever is doing the meeting needs to look good. So you wouldn't go to a professional meeting with a C-suite executive in a t-shirt and a trucker's hat. You know, you would dress appropriately for that business and make certain that you are presenting an image that would be considered professional within that business. That's another thing you need to research is what are the standards and the norms so, so that you do look professional and the material that you bring in is professional. Now, we've talked about how you differentiate yourself in part one, but you have to also have messaging that's very clear about that because you don't want to go in and simply have all of your regular information that has you just the same as every other home health agency. You want to play to your strengths. You want to make certain that you are presenting that information in a way that they are going to receive it. And that generally is bullet points and very clear messaging about what it is you're trying to sell to them. You also need a person who's got the skill sets to approach someone who is a different type of referrer. The person that you use to do your community liaison, your marketing, if you want to call it that, to your local referral sources may not be the same person that needs to be in front of a decision maker at an ACO or at a hospital. You want to make certain that you've got the right person assigned to this task so that when they do make their paths cross, they do have the chance meeting, they do get a chance to, to actually go in and visit with that person, that they're going to be able to hold their own in that conversation and they're going to be able to come out of that conversation with some actionable items that they can then implement to keep that relationship going. So the introduction, the ongoing follow-up, the consistent presentation of your agency as a solution to something that they're lacking, that has to also be a component of when you have this meeting. Let's talk about professional image and branding, your materials and your website. You really do need to use all of the traditional marketing tactics to make people understand what service that you're offering. And that's going to include some or all of these. Testimonials from people that have used your service. Your star ratings have to be good. Your health compare scores have to be good. If you have any awards, if you've been cited for any meritorious achievements, then those need to be showcased. Anything that you've done that makes you stand out, that will help you be top of mind, that will help you differentiate yourself from anybody else, those all need to be included in your material and on your website. And you need this in hard copy, not all of it, but some of it, specific bullet points as an introduction and a leave behind. You need to have digital content as well as hard copy content in order to leave behind. So how are they going to find you if they're looking for something and you are trying to position yourself to be that something, they're going to go where everyone else is looking. That C-suite exec at some point in time is going to go to the internet and do a search. That may be the first step in the process, that may be later on in the process after they've met you and you've presented to them, but at some point they're going to do that search on the internet. And I mentioned looking good and looking professional. First impressions count. So it's a, whether that first impression is going to your website or that first impression is your first meeting with this person, you know, at a sports event or at a charity auction or whatever, those first impressions count. So make certain that when that opportunity presents itself that you are making a very good first impression. So the C-suite executive, if they are looking on the Internet are not going to be searching generically, they're going to be searching specifically. If they need a partner to present to wound care services, then they are going to look for someone who has a specialty of wound care. So when you are using your digital marketing capacity, social media, website, you need to focus on those things, that gap service that you're trying to fill, that niche market service that you are presenting to them. So they are also going to be looking when they're looking for quality. So your home health agency website needs to look good. It needs to be clean. It needs to have easy user experience so you can get through the website. They can find what they're looking for. In other words, you need to make certain that that website is also geared 
to present your niche market and your differentiation the way that you want it to be presented for that C-suite executive who's looking. So they're going to be looking for, do you have a specialty that you have said you have? And what are all of your rankings against the competitors? What are your reviews? And they're also going to look at staff qualifications. I think this is one of the areas that home health agencies fall down on is in the About Us section. Oftentimes the About Us section just has generic terms about how wonderful the agency is. They're going to want to look and see what qualifications do you actually have in your management team and in your clinical team that will allow them to understand that you can present those services that you're saying that you can present, that you do have the capacity to scale, and that you are being innovative. So that's what they're going to be looking for on your website. Now, ideally, that website that you have that uh, supports your home health agency, it should be extending your brand, and that is assuming that you do have a professionally developed brand, not a logo that your nephew did or not a website that, you're, uh, that someone built that isn't professional and doesn't really understand the industry. Your website should also have a HIPAA-compliant intake capacity. So it just makes it easier, and that will also show that your agency is innovative and, and up to speed in terms of technology. You really have to have the website designed so that it does showcase any other partnerships you have, any innovations of care you're doing, and those specialties, of course, that you are trying to present to that C-suite executive so that they will use you when they are, are looking for a partner in their services. The other thing you need to do is extend your reach through communication. And that means having communication processes in place, a system for data collection and follow-up, meaning that when you meet people at an event, whether you are intentionally trying to meet those people or whether they're ancillary people you meet at the event, you need to collect that information, you need to store it, you need to key it in for the specific event and the different niche markets that they're in or the different categories they're in, whether they're an ACO or a partner. So you really do need to think about these communication processes and get them in place because you need to also regularly communicate and follow up. You need a laser focus in terms of who do you need to get in front of and what kind of partner are you looking for. And you need to make certain that whether it's a chance meeting or whether it's a planned meeting, that you take advantage of that opportunity and you continue to communicate with those people and you continue that conversation because you really have to follow up and follow through consistently because you are looking for a long-term relationship. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And it is Relationship Building 101. So it uh, starts with an introduction. It takes time. You have to have repetitive efforts. You have to get in front of each other. I mean, it takes three or four times for people to even remember your name, much less where you work or what it, why you want to get in front of them. So you really do need to think of this as a long-term strategy. You also have to make certain that at every opportunity, you let them know you are the solution for their problem. So... Again, you've researched it, you know what their problem is, you know what they're trying to add into their service delivery system, so you need to be really clear about the fact that you are the solution to that. And once you actually are the solution and you have the partnership underway and you're working, the relationship and the communication and the follow-through doesn't stop there. You still need to continue building that relationship. That might be personal notes, that might be articles of interest that you see, it might be holiday gifts, it might be invitations to uh, something that you think that they will enjoy, maybe a lecture or a video series or something that you think that they will enjoy, but you really have to keep that relationship going. You always have to look for ways to do what you're doing better, and you always have to look for ways to make certain that that partnership is solid because you know what, there's other people out there who would like to take your place, so you need to solidify your place in that relationship. On a more of an industry uh, focus on what you need to be doing, this I guess should be normal, but I'm not certain that everyone does this, you really need to keep up to date with what are all of the reimbursement models. You need to keep up to date with industry regulations and changes, and that is getting harder because we're having some big ones now and, and upcoming. 
but you're also going to, in those changes, be looking for opportunities because there's all different types of models that are being created and you need to look for ways that you can be a partner with people who are providing that service or provide that service yourself. The local, national, state organizations, not just home health care organizations, but organizations in the health care delivery system or in the aging system, aging services system, you need to, to really pay attention and be involved in those because there's all different things happening in the world. As the population ages and as the demographic shift is occurring, more and more people are looking for ways to solve the problem. And being a home health agency, Medicare certified home health agency, is one small solution in this whole arena of, of problems that are projected to be upcoming. And you want to position yourself to be solidly in with whatever partners you need to be with so that you can be successful. Now, no one said this was going to be easy. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. So the smart home health agency is going to really think about the future. The smart home health agency is going to realize you have to think differently. We're not in the same service provision model we were in before. There's a lot of changes. There's regulation changes, there's population shifts, there are provider shifts, there's reimbursement shifts, a lot of changes in this industry right now. So you have to be open to change and you have to be open to understanding that you simply cannot do what you've always done for the last 10 or 15 years and expect to be successful in the future. You're going to have to think differently and you're going to, marketing is, is a necessary component of that. If you have any questions for me, here's a lot of contact information, ways to contact and a, a lot of information too that Core Cubed has, but I want to take time just now to thank Access again for the opportunity to be involved in this exciting industry on a different level and thank you for your attention today. Thank you for joining our on-demand training today and for choosing Access, a provider of innovative cloud-based software services and solutions to help home health organizations improve patient care and grow their business. Access is the only healthcare technology company approved to award continuing education credits by the American Nurses Credentialing Center and is also the most recommended home health software on Software Advice. You can watch more on-demand training videos through our software or at access.com, where you can also find tutorials, blogs, white papers, and answers to frequently asked questions. Thanks again for choosing Access.